Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isratel here for the last video in this mini series on using the pump, disruption, and performance to auto-regulate your volume. Warning, this particular presentation is very technical. So if you're a person who has friends, if you're not a nerd, uh, go hang out with your friends instead. Don't watch this video. If you're a super nerd, you have nothing better to do, like me, I have nothing better to do than make these videos, you're gonna have a lot of fun. So let's get to the fun. What are we gonna to do today? We're gonna to review how the three volume regulators of pump disruption performance inform our volume. We're gonna talk about how to integrate them, and then we're gonna talk about how to apply that in the real world, especially in a simplified manner. So, quality first. The sets have to be good technique, and they have to be close to failure for any of the shit to work properly. But, here's the thing, just generally, independently of each other, the volume regulators are the proxies for how hard we worked, tell us something about volume. So in an is in isolation, the pump, if you got no pump at all from training whatsoever, uh, it's probably not enough volume, okay? If you got a good pump, you're probably really on track for volume. And if you got a mega crazy pump, that's great, but you gotta watch for if the disruption is too excessive, especially over the next several days with delayed onset muscle soreness. Disruption. If everything is fine and there's no disruption, man, you're probably just not uh, doing enough volume. If uh, you're pretty messed up, that's probably pretty good. It's a good average to hit. And if you're cooked and just completely debilitated, that's pretty good. But watch for performance because you don't want to interfere with anything uh, on a performance basis. Lastly, performance. If you're hitting your planned progressions super easy, way too easy, you might not be doing enough volume. If you're hitting your numbers with a good appropriate challenge, you're probably right in there in that middle track of really great volume. And if you're failing to hit your planned numbers because you're so super fatigued and messed up, it's almost definitely too much volume, all right? Now, that's using them by themselves. How do we use them together? Boy, oh boy, do we have a treat for you. So integrating the regulation of volume from all three of these proxies. The pump, quite simple. You monitor the pump during the actual training, like set to set to set in the training itself. And the pump informs what you should do, be doing in that very session itself. So if the pump is at least decent, you're good to go, okay? So don't change any volume if the pump is decent. And you could be more nitpicky and say it's at least as good as last week, okay? If you had a better pump last week, even if you have a decent pump this time, eh, you might not be growing as much as you could be if you had a better pump. All right, so with those two rules, you plus and minus a set to get to where you can check both those boxes. The pump's at least decent, and it's at least as good as last, last week, and you keep doing sets until you get there. All right, so if you do one set and nothing happens with your pump, is it decent? No, it's non-existent. Do more sets. If you do three sets and your pump is decent, last week, how was your pump? Better. Okay, this week, maybe we do four. Maybe. Okay? So first example here is let's say in your first week of training, you do two sets of bench press, the pump is like meh, then you do one more and you reevaluate. Another example is you do four sets of curls in your second week of training, but so you, so far you've done four, that, that literal session, your plan was five because last week you did four and everything was fine. So you added a set, but the pump is just gnarly at four. Like you finished four and you're like, holy shit, stop. Okay, stop at four, auto-regulate, because you don't need that fifth one. It might just provide too much damage and fuck up your disruption and fuck up your performance. Performance. You want to check your overall performance for how you did for that muscle group right after you finish training. So after you finish the session of, let's say, chest, you want to see how your chest uh, performance actually did relative to the week before and so on and so forth. And... Based on just the performance, you want to jot down an idea of if you want to increase, decrease, or uh, what you know what to do with volume. So, if the performance on chest was great and like sort of way too easy, you're like, okay, like this was kind of a joke. I blew all my planned progressions out of the water. Then you're probably underdosing volume and maybe plan to increase next week. Same workout, like Monday chest, next Monday chest. Plan to increase by a set or two. If your performance is right on track, you hit your numbers and they were about as hard as you thought they were going to be. No change. Leave your set numbers alone. And if you're underperforming, like you're super fatigued, you don't hit your numbers, plan to use a recovery session, especially if next session also underperforms. Here's the big deal, right? Monday you hit chest 
and you had a shitty workout, you underperformed, don't just make the next session recovery session. Try to go and hit it hard again on Thursday. Let's say it's your next chest session because it could have just been a one-off on Monday. Sometimes you have shitty workouts. It doesn't mean your fatigue super accumulated. It's just sometimes shit sucks. So Thursday, if you blow that workout out of the water, fuck it. Same number of sets Monday, uh, uh, next Monday is last Monday. But if you start that workout and your chest is so sore or you really underperform again, for sure, or recovery workout next Monday, maybe even next Thursday, for sure next Monday, and then maybe next Thursday start ramping it back up. All right, pretty straightforward. So here are two examples for you guys uh, just, just to play around with. And these are not uh, exhaustive examples. There's many other ways that can uh, come out. But let's say you plan to hit 225 for an average of 10 reps per set at two reps in reserve. You show up, you go two reps in reserve, but that actually meant you got 12 reps per set. Okay, that meant like everything being equal, that was way too easy. And you probably just haven't been doing enough volume to make you tired enough. And that means next week you can add uh, a set to the chest workout that preceded this one. So for example, if you overperformed, this workout, let's say, was on a Thursday that we just did, the 225 for sets of 12. Like, that means your Monday chest workout just really didn't cause a whole lot of fatigue and probably because it was underdosed with volume. So what you do is this workout that you hit the 12s, whatever, that was fine. Next Monday, this is the Thursday workout you just did, what you go look in your logbook and go, okay, next Monday, last time I did three sets of chest. Mm, that didn't make me as tired as I thought it would. Four sets, okay? So that's what it was, four sets on Monday. The Thursday will take care of itself later, right? Another example, because it's not it's not always up or down sets, sometimes, maybe most times, it's leave the sets alone. You do, let's say, uh, 130 pounds and a lap hold down for 15 reps this week with an average of RIR1. So one rep in reserve. Last week, you look at your logbook, you did 125, five pounds less for two reps in reserve. Uh, it looks like that's really good. Plan progression is stable. And you did, let's say, you know, f f five sets last time of lap hold downs and five sets this time. Uh, next time's five sets, right? Because it's, like, it's super on track. Everything's going super well, like by itself, right? Just with that performance uh, regulation itself. So lastly is disruption, okay? You want to monitor disruption during training because like if your performance is falling off like crazy because of local fatigue, that's a thing to take note. But you don't just stop at the current training. You monitor it all the way up to the next training session for that muscle group, so you monitor disruption on your Monday chest workout through the chest workout, especially towards the end when disruption becomes evident. And then you monitor how perturbed you are after, how much soreness you get after. If it's delayed onset, it'll creep up on you again. And then you see by Thursday for the next chest workout, how much soreness, how much disruption do you still have? Could be zero, could be a little bit, could be a lot, so on and so forth, right? Jot all that down. And then for the next week's session before that one, you make the volume alterations. So for example, if you had Thursday, okay, Thursday chest, you show up and you're like, what is my level of disruption? Okay, if you look back and you're like, man, that Monday workout barely disrupted me at all during Monday and then I wasn't even sore next Monday, because you're doing this on the Thursday workout because finally everything's for sure healed. You go, okay, next Monday, I'm not doing two sets anymore. I'm doing three. You add a set or add two because it was just not enough. If when you're measuring for that Thursday, you just healed on time, no change. Okay, you did four sets of chest Monday. You barely healed by Thursday. Whatever number of sets you do on Thursday, definitely don't increase Monday. Just keep it at four. If you don't heal on time, we have a little bit of a bifurcation here. And again, this is an advanced lecture, quite complicated. If you were just a little messed up still, and especially if your performance went well, don't do anything about it. Just keep the same number of sets. Like a little bit of a twinge in chest soreness, but you hit all your numbers and everything goes great. Not a big deal, nothing to worry about. Definitely don't go up, but you don't have to go down. You can just still do the six sets or whatever you were gonna do. If you were really messed up, reduce the volume of that prior session next week. So if Thursday, your chest is still fucked up from Monday to the point where it like is really painful or it really hurts your workout, Next Monday, don't do six sets like you did, maybe do four, okay? Because whatever you did Monday this past week was way too much, and you don't want that to happen again, right? So a couple more examples here. So example number one, you did six sets of quads in the last session. You hardly fatigued. Your muscles felt fine the whole time. Zero doms. But this time you do one more. Pretty simple, right? One more. So seven sets of quads in that next session. Next example, you do eight sets of hamstrings. I'm not sure what would compel you to do such a thing. Um, maybe, well, here's an example of how this actually can happen. 
you've been doing hamstrings, you've been doing like six or seven sets, but your technique and your relative effort haven't been that good. And you watched a Dr. Mike Renaissance periodization video on technique and relative effort. And you're like, fuck yeah. So you extended your range of motion. You drove it close to failure. You're really focused on your hams and also the good stuff. And all of a sudden you're like, well, this is working great. And then you're like, oh, I should do eight sets because this is awesome. I figured out how to train my hamstrings. And then you crawl to your car and your hams are painful to the touch and they're cramping like crazy. And they're still painful to the touch when you have to train them next. So you do two things in that case. One is let's say this happened on Monday and on Thursday you have to train hams again and you're still fucked up. First thing, reduce Thursday to a recovery workout. If you need to uh, Google or YouTube recovery workouts or recovery sessions, deloads and stuff like that, we have tons of content on that from earlier. So definitely just go easy there on Thursday. And then next Monday, when you have to train hams again, do like six sets, do not do eight because eight was clearly too much, right? So how do we finally see all of this in the big picture? And I have a really cool little um, uh, piece of art I drew, visual representation. Some of this is a little bit complicated to see in your head all at once. So you might wanna pause the video here, read the shit on the slide and really look at the slide because it really does say a lot. So the pump guides decisions within the session itself, okay? And it, it affects the current session. So if you're doing chest, doesn't matter what you did last week, doesn't matter what you're gonna do next week, if you're doing chest and you don't have a good pump yet, keep going. If you already have a great pump, you can probably stop, okay? Even if you did whatever last week and you plan to do whatever next week, once you get a great pump, it's probably good to stop. If you get a skin splitting pump, maybe you've gone even a little bit too far, right? Performance, guides the decision right after the session finishes. So if you're Thursday chest, you know your performance of Thursday chest right after it's over, and it informs how you're gonna modify Monday's next chest workout. So it's the session right before it in the week, but that's next week now, right? And if that's confusing, just pause it, and just look at this diagram and it'll figure everything out. And disruption lasts potentially all the way up until your next session. So we notice that if you look at the little diagram, the disruption, is all the way up until this last Thursday's chest workout, we measure disruption because maybe you're sore that long, then it also affects the session before or rather the one next week. So if Monday of this week fucked you up so bad that Thursday you were still sore, what you change is next Monday's volume, not necessarily Thursday's volume because you could be just a little bit sore and you can still get through it. That volume can change, but that has to be a performance change. So if you're pretty sore, and you come into the gym and you're not exactly sure if you can perform, for most people, the best guess is this, just try it. Cause you could perform super well. And a one-time thing of being a little too sore um, is not gonna get you hurt or any shit like that. The risk for that is super low. So try it and it could be a great session, but then next time you know, reduce the volume, right? Super, super simple. So another way to put this relatively simply, when you begin a session, you can ask the question of, am I still sore in that target muscle group? And you can use this info for the next session. You can see like, okay, I'm super mondo sore. I'm just gonna take a, a recovery workout or I'm just a twinge sore. Let's see how it goes. And you can definitely use it for that workout before in the next week. So if you show up to a Thursday and you're still sore for Monday, next Monday is gonna have to change somehow because that's an untenable proposition to continue to train sore all the time. We call it overlapping soreness. During the session, in the first week of the mezzo, you do as many sets as it takes to get a decent pump and a decent level of perturbation and local fatigue. Like, okay, I did something to my quads. And that's it. If it's any session that's not the first week, if you have numbers to compare it to, then you plan to do the volume that you had figured out from all the other auto regulations. So like last week you did five sets of leg press and then you'd like whatever, didn't get sore or whatever, and your performance is super easy, you plan to do six. Still plan to do six, but alter that uh, if it goes up or down in any way. So for example, if you plan to do six, and after six sets, you don't really get much of a pump, uh, yeah, maybe add seven, just right there. On the other, especially if you didn't get super sore last time or anything, it's probably no downside. On the other hand, if you're like, mind muscle connection is really great, if your technique has really improved, if you really bring the psychology that day, you might do like four or five sets of leg press and be like, holy fuck, I can barely move my legs. This is the biggest pump I had in my entire life. It doesn't matter that you did six last time and it doesn't matter that you plan to do seven. Fucking stop at five because anything more will probably just be excessive damage. So there's opportunity for auto regulation there right after the session, then you ask the question of how was my performance? 
Okay, did I perform way too easy? If that's the case, next week we add a little bit. If it's right on track, we don't change a thing and the performance is really like on a string, we definitely don't increase. And if the performance was a disaster, we have to execute recovery sessions because we're probably too close to our MRV or even beyond. Now, this right here is right from the Scientific Principles of Hypertrophy book. If you really want to just destroy all these concepts in your head and get them super deep, just buy the book and read the shit. But if you just want to stare at the screen for a while, this is available book here. It's on YouTube for free with not much explanation except for what I just said. This is the algorithm you can use to figure out, depending on how sore you got and depending on your sort of disruption on one scale and your performance on another, how many sets to add, whether to add sets at all, and if and when to do recovery sessions. This is it, okay? And the pump isn't in here because it modifies these values. Because for example, if it, we use this uh, little chart here and it says, okay, you never got sore, 0, 0.0, and each set was much easier than planned, it says add one to three sets next week. So how do you use the pump? Well, here's the cool thing, right? It says add one to three sets. That's fucking arbitrary shit. It's a big range. When you get to that next week, let's say you did four sets the week before. It says add one to three. So that could be five sets or it could be seven sets. Who the fuck knows? Start training, watch your pump. If you get to set number five and your pump is awesome, stop. Then there's your one of one to three. If you get to set number five and your pump is like, meh, do another one. If your pump is awesome, stop at six. And potentially, if you get all the way up to six sets and your pump is still like, meh, and like the disruption, the fatigue just isn't there, the perturbation isn't there, then what you do is you're like, fuck it, it's seven. Then it's one to three, then it's three. Okay, so you use the pump and a little bit of perturbation as well to guide you within this framework. Seems complicated, but we can absolutely simplify it, right? If you want to be super meticulous, yeah, you can use the very specific guidelines we presented so far. Pause the video on this, um, uh, on the chart there, print the screen. If you have the hypertrophy book, you get this anyway. If you want something simpler, there is simpler advice, and here it is. If your training makes you barely sore and your performance is way above your planned goals, add a set or two next week because you're probably not training with enough volume. If your training gets you nice and sore and you hit your performance on track a little bit, you know, every week, you're fucking golden. Don't mess with your set numbers. If your training wrecks you and makes you underperform, reduce the sets and consider a recovery session to get back on track. Because sometimes you've accumulated so much fatigue that just lowering the next session to a normal amount of training isn't good enough. You way too much fatigue, right? Like if you, uh, here's a good analogy. If you were like making food in a kitchen, you just fucking have just dirt everywhere because you're a real piece of shit about it. You're doing that Italian pasta tossing thing and pasta just fucking goes everywhere and so does the sauce. The burners are on fire because there's pasta and sauce in them. If you're in that position, yeah, if you're like, okay, this is stupid, what am I doing? You can just go back to cooking normally and not like an asshole and just mixing the pasta in the, in the pot without doing this. You could do that. But if you have enough fatigue, if there's enough pasta and sauce in the burners and shit's on fire, before you do that, you got to clean some shit up, okay? So it might be like if you're really, really high fatigued, next session isn't just normal, a little less volume. Next session might need to be a recovery session. And then only next week do you get back to doing uh, normal stuff but a little bit more moderated because you knew that this number of sets you got up to, maybe seven sets, way overkill. Next week, you go to four, but later this week, you'll go to just two or three sets with a light load, really recover, give your body some breathing room, and then start to go back in to what is much more reasonable as far as volume. Whatever number of sets this logic plans for you, when you show up to the gym, you can use the pump and to some extent perturbation and fatigue to figure out how to modify that. So you say, okay, with all these things taken into consideration this week, Monday, leg press should be about five sets. You go in, you start doing the sets. If it's set three, because of your awesome mind muscle connection, your pump is fucking toasting you, stop. If you get to five sets and your pump's meh, especially compared to last week, feel free to do another one and reevaluate and so on and so forth. If the pump is unbelievable, but you have more sets planned, and especially if it's like a skin stretching pump, don't chase the shit and keep going, okay? You want a really great pump, but there is such a thing as too much. That workout will go great. It'll be the best workout you ever had. 
but the next workout might not. So if it's your last week of accumulation and it says you should be doing seven sets and you get to set six and you have a gnarly pump, fuck it, do set seven, get the pump of your life because next week you just get to recover the entire time. You get some super compensation that's delayed, excellent muscle growth. But if it's the middle of your program or the beginning, don't get greedy about the pump, just go for good pump. Don't let the modifier give you more volume because it'll, it'll damage you excessively. You might not grow much and it'll also add a ton of fatigue and you'll really short stop yourself. Folks, whew, that was a lot of shit. Hopefully it made some sense. If it didn't, comment. If it did, comment. Either way, comment, goddammit. The algorithm, folks, I sit here in front of you, not in a Lamborghini. That's a problem. Successful YouTubers have Lamborghinis. That's what YouTube taught me. Am I not a successful YouTuber? Buy me Lamborghini, click on ads, buy Gymshark shit or V-Shreds or whatever the fuck they do, uh, kind of ads they do. Funny story before I let you guys go, my dad watches a lot of my YouTube videos. He's like proud of me and shit, which is fucking sweet. And uh, that's great, right? I don't know. I think he listens to what I say, maybe. But he doesn't lift weights or anything, so he give a flying fuck. And he's super smart. He's like a physicist or whatever. But I don't think he gives a flying fuck. But for some goddamn reason, and this is how awesome the algorithms are and how well the shit is designed, UI, UX, because he's like afraid of computers in, in many cases, he clicks on the ads, all right? So, so my dad will literally call me and be like, oh, Misha, how are you? My Russian name is Misha. And he'll be like, oh, you know, we'll bullshit for a while. And he's like, hey, like... You know, what do you think of like, you know, like Dr. Axe or whatever? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, why? Why? Like, what do you think about him? And he's like, well, you know, he's advertising some kind of miracle supplement on one of your videos. And I clicked on it and it looks really convincing. I'm like, no, my dad's clicking on V-Shreds ads, people. Be like my dad. Click on the ads. Buy me Lambo. See you next time.